This fearful looking monster was made out of metal and paper mache. Designed by Tobias Husemann, it represents a coal fire power station. Julia Kaiser helped to build it. It's part of a protest movement against brown coal mining in the Lausitz region, 150 kilometers south of Berlin. So much destruction for a bit of coal that we perhaps wouldn't even need if we used our energy more sensibly. I think we need to reduce the amount of energy that's consumed. We shouldn't continue to waste renewable energy sources the way we do now. During the protest, the 26-year-old will spend a week sleeping in a tent. Here at the climate camp, she'll be talking to other environmentalists from all over Germany, taking part in workshops, discussions and excursions. The participants want to win over the locals. That's not always easy, because many of them work in the coal mining industry and jobs are hard to come by in this part of Germany. The noise of the mining machines can be heard at the campsite several kilometers away. Rudi Gaziba says coal mining is an important economic factor. He's on the works committee for the mining company, a subsidiary of the energy giant Vattenfall. A total of 24,000 jobs in the Lausitz region depend on coal mining. And when you take into account the others who work elsewhere, then it's a lot more people in all. If Germany wants to stay an industrial country, which I assume it does, then we need reliable and viable energy supplies. At present, these are safeguarded by coal. In fact, by all fossil fuels. The open cast mines are quickly emptied of coal. New sites are constantly in demand. As a result, villages like Proshim have to go. The 800 inhabitants will have to move. There are some 200 million tons of coal waiting to be mined under the village. Zabida Mittelbach is one of those affected. She set up a riding school in Proshim. She wouldn't suffer any financial loss by relocating. Vattenfall would have to pay her compensation. But making a fresh start wouldn't be easy. Originally from Berlin, she's grown fond of the village. I come from a long way away and have really settled in here. Proshim is now my home, and now I'm being forced to leave it. We all know each other in the village. It's not easy. Back at the climate camp. The protesters have come up with some unusual ideas. Daniel Hefner sells candy floss. He's already seen villages fall victim to the mining industry. Profits from the candy floss sales help pay for the legal costs in the battle against Vattenfall. We don't have a lot of money, so we have to sell a lot of candy floss. But we're also selling people something they can enjoy. We stand a good chance of stopping the bulldozers before they get to Proshim. I'm sure of that. The environmental groups and the locals will do all they can to stop the mining. They still have a few months to win over the locals and persuade them to put in official protests and perhaps save their village.